Shane Thomas live in Studio Nationals in here. I'm a happy girl. Good morning. Thanks Good morning, for being man. with us. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. That ninth inning on Wednesday, I mean, come from behind win after come from behind win. There's a little bit of fight with this team. What's going on there? Hey, we've got some really exciting young guys. Yeah. You know, CJ and Mackenzie Gore and just the whole lineup. We get along and it's fun to, you know, be down on those games and come back and it's been it's been really fun. Dero likes to say when looking at a team or a player, you can start to imagine. And and I was yeah. at Nat's camp this spring and, and that was the sense I got there. You've got, got some talent already, young talent at the big league level, but there's also a lot of talent there down in the minors that where the, the Nats could be really good or maybe a lot sooner than people yeah. think. Yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, the this most recent draft and then, you know, some of the guys that were a little young in that trade last year. So, you know, I think when some of those guys get up and, you know, we put some pieces together, I think you're right. I think we can compete, you know, in the next couple of years. We'll see. Take me through the mindset we did it earlier but as you were coming through the Lincoln Tunnel fighting for your life. <laughs> we did a Justin Turner skybox kind of utility player breaking in and the fight to play every day. You're finally getting a chance to truly show what you can do. I mean, take me through that thought process, the kind of grind that that's led to this year. Yeah, I think, um, you know, early on, you kind of, you know, get to a place like St. Louis where you have, you know, the Arnados and the Goldies. It's tough to get and, on the field. Yeah, and, and you just kind of accept that role, but I feel like in the back of your head, you can't give up the, you know, I can do this every day at some point. So, you know, you're kind of ready for both and just accept what you're doing at that at that moment. So, you know, I love my time there, but you know, it was cool to get, get get a little better opportunity. Did you feel coming off the pine, you had to be result based, and then now you you know Davey's running you out there every day. I could truly work on my craft, and 0 for four is not going to kill me. Leads to the next day. Yeah, I kind of got off to a hot start, you know, like pinch hitting and stuff, and then you know, it's just a hard job to be good at, you know. Yeah. So you just kind of have to take what you get, and you know, moving a guy over is a you know a, a job well done. So. Um, I think that's the transition is what, you know, you get the 0 for 4s are not going to, you know, you're not riding the, the pine the next day. But <laughs> Lauren and I, when we do the highlights, a lot of times we'll say Lane Thomas is in the middle of every Look at the Nats numbers. highlight. You, you and and there's a reason this? why. Look at these numbers, Lauren. We were, uh, I mean, look, look at this. This is nationally ranks. 10th in average, top five in, in hits, top 10 in total bases. I, I mean, Lane, you're putting together a, a, a quality campaign. Uh, you have to be feeling great about where you're at right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we still got a lot of games left, but it's it's definitely a good start and, you know, excited for the next, you know, next 60 games. But don't so. get too cocky because diapers are coming. Oh, yeah. That's oh, what really? I hear. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Are you ready? How far away are Congratulations. we? Yeah, Congratulations. Yeah, I think, I think the due date is November 8th. Okay. So, Off season, yeah. she's. Oh, look oh yeah, at she's that. fired up. She was a little upset it was a boy, but. Oh, yeah, she really wanted what? a girl, but yeah, it was awesome. And you got a doodle right there. I got two oh, doodles yeah. at home. What's the pup's name? Baxter. Baxter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take well, me through an off day in D.C. Lauren's from there. Yeah, I'm from oh, McLean. Cool. Where oh, you? awesome. Uh, we live right in the Navy Yard there, so yep. close to the stadium. It's tough to get in and out of the, Oh, you know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we stay like close. Like the wharf? And, um, no, like literally Couple. six blocks from the stadium. Blocks, yeah. yeah. Um, so you're walking to the yard. The traffic yeah. is insane, yes? Oh, it's insane. I don't know how people get in and out of that. I mean, even to McLean, it's not far, but you get, you know, wrong time of day, it's taking you an hour. So off day, are we are we checking out the monuments or are we getting rest? What are we doing? Yeah, we me and my wife used to get on the scooters and go yeah. ride around. Oh, yeah, because nice. they're not they're not like super close. They're they're close enough. Yeah. But, you know, the scooter's a little easy. You know, you gotta play at night. I'm like, honey, we're taking the scooter. <laughs> yeah. What what's the message that that Davey and his coaching staff routinely give you and your teammates? Because as you said, there's there's talent there, a lot of talent, but it is young talent, and you guys are having to figure it out collectively at the big league level. What's the message they give you guys? Um, you know, I think he's just big on just playing hard, you know, sticking to your routines, and, and he's not super, you know, on to us a lot, but he, he gives us the freedom to kind of get in our own routines and get, you know, um, yeah, like, you know, we go outside, and, and, and it's the same stuff every day, but we get... Um, a lot of stuff on the field, talk through some situations on the bases, and if something mm. comes up where it's a situation that, you know, we didn't do very well, then, then we go through it and, and figure it out the next time. So it's, it's good. Are you a uh, University of Tennessee fan from Knoxville? Love it. Love it? Love it. Born and raised. Is that the best football experience? Because so, for me, it's LSU, and I'm a Gator. And so then Hendon, Hendon Hooker walked out the door this year. Do we, do we think we can handle I think that? we got some boys coming. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. It's, it's a good spot. I think we're in a good place. 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't sleep when on the, the basketball band team. Comes over the hill. I mean, is there anything better than that? Oh my gosh. I feel like all, all three months. major sports have been pretty good the last two yeah. years. So hopefully it stays that way for a while. So uh, you guys yeah, are going to do your thing, right? Dive in. I always feel we're, like when we, we get out? Yeah, we're, like we're out. Thomas hey. to come in. Let, let the hitters talk hitting, okay? Wait, school's out. <laughs> school's out, but school's in. School's in right session. Here. You guys so, take Lane, it away. I, I want to go through it. I always feel like it's a teaching moment yeah. for the kids at home. I know I used to run outside and put the tee and try and hit like Daryl Strawberry and Don Mattingly and all these things. So if we can unlock one kid on what you do, because there's no cookie cutting in this game. Mm -hmm. Do you dive into the analytics? Of what you're doing, where you're where you're at, where you hit the ball, what you handle best. Um, to a certain extent, I don't get too caught up in it, but certain things, you know, I like um, I like knowing my strike zone and what pitches I handle well, because I feel like the more simple you can make it, and, yeah. and this is the pitch I want to get, and this count, and this, you know, what I mean, it just 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 simplifying the approach. Are you watching? Like I used to come in. Chipper Jones taught me. You come in. You watch video of the, of the starters' last three starts. Then you try and find comps to yourself of how he's attacked those guys. Then you look at what he does with runners in scoring position. Is that pretty no, I standard? Think I think that's pretty spot on for you know even myself. Yeah, I think you know there's so many different guys and they all have different stuff and different fastballs. I think it's important just knowing you know how to handle all those pitches and what your kind of mindset's going to be. So during the WBC, I watched everybody's routine. Some guys like to get outside, take a little BP. There was two or three guys that never saw the light of day until the game started. They like to do all that high velocity foam stuff, the curveball machines, and they wanted to stay underneath. What take me through you showing up to Nats Park and how you're getting ready? Yeah, um, I usually you know get 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 warmed up and you know whatever treatment and get in the training room and just make sure I'm feeling good and then you know I go down to the cage pretty early and I don't I don't take a ton of swings but just go through a few drills like I start off with just a little side toss, um, old school side yeah, toss, old school side toss, yeah, really, and I didn't really start doing that till you know about halfway through last year, yeah, so because I always felt like the old school side toss I'd end up, going, yeah, I'd close myself off, yeah. so I felt like it didn't work for me. Yeah, I, you know, I try to, like, be aware of that kind of stuff and, like, you know, notice when I'm, you know, squaring off or, yeah. or pulling off or something. But that's, you know, just a warm-up. I kind of use it as, like, the tee almost. But yeah. just, just take 10 or 15 swings. Um, then a little short, quick, you know, hard overhand. And then I usually hit off the machine based off of what the, the you know, lefty breaking ball, righty breaking ball. So just kind of get a feel for what pitch I'm going to see that night. Let's get into the video. Yeah. You can love on yourself. This is where you, <laughs> these are called dig me sessions right here. You look like, I mean, you are aggressive with the top hand. You are not concerning yourself with driving the ball the other way. <laughs> and you hear 85% of the guys, their mindset is, even if it's not going that way, I got to think up the middle the other way to give myself the best chance. You kind of disprove that. Pause this. You're getting on the plate and you're trying to pull. Are you conscious of that? Are you trying to do that? Um, What'd you I, say to me before we came on the air? I'm not necessarily thinking pull, but when I try to, th you know, when I try to think like, oh, I'm gonna drive this ball to right center, or you know, you. Growing up, it was like the left hander. I was like, everybody's like, oh, you gotta hit him to right field. And yeah. I, was like, Man, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm just fouling these things off, you know, like at my waist back here. So, I, I do. I try to think a little out in front, and you know, like left center, center field. And it, some days you feel great, and it's yeah. like, you know what, I'll hit it back here that way. And be, but some days you feel terrible, and I'm like, I'm going to hook this, you know, foul. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you end up doing something cool. So. All right, let's go through an A-B. You're eventually going to bridge Luis Castillo. So pause this real quick. What's the mindset going into this matchup? Dirty sinker, filthy changeup, little slider. Yeah, I think, you know, like, like what you said, it's, you know, sometimes 100 and it's sinking and it's everything's in and, you know, good change up, those are to righty some. So I was going to get him up a little bit and, and try to shoot something to left center. So do you get feel like you get, because you're good at pulling the baseball, do you feel like pitchers have a tough time getting in on me? Um, or you're not thinking that? No, I, I try to think about it because I feel like sometimes when you look in, you chase in. Yeah. So I'm kind of like trying to push him out and get something up that I can get underneath and, you know, not ground. I love out. it. Yeah. Run this 93 in 1 0, heater down. I mean, I mean, he's kind of disrespecting you with three heaters in a row in the <laughs> middle of the zone right there. So run that back for me. Come out of it slow. So pause that. It looks like, I mean, your hips are going early. 
you, I've, wa I've watched so many guys listen to what they talk about. Alex Bregman talks about flashlights, flashlights. I want to stay square. Yeah. I don't know if you've watched him recently. He's swinging like he really? doesn't even want to turn right now. Yeah. And he's gotten hot. Are you even thinking? No, I just think oil. I think that's just kind of a natural move, and it sometimes gets me in trouble because that's a little quick. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm definitely conscious of what he talks about, trying to stay square. And, you know, when I struggle is when I get, like, two pull happy two and the hips fly out and, you know, the bat kind of gets long back yep. here. So when I get to that point, I start, you know, trying to get Have more you always had pop? So-so. Yeah. yeah. Were you a home run hitter as a kid? Um, yeah, high school, I kind of like started hitting a little more homers. I wasn't always the biggest guy, so yeah. it took a while. Late bloomer? Yeah, late, or were you... late bloomer. Really? Yeah. I think when I graduated high school, I was like 5'11", 150 pounds. I wasn't much bigger. Yeah. Run this real quick. I mean, you see him a ton, Sandy yeah. Alcantara. His ball's exploding all over the place. Just, again, looking for something up, driving it out yeah. the other way. Good swing right there. So you simplify it, sitting here talking to you. Pause this. Very simple yeah. approach. Stay on the heater, look for something up, for sure. and going. Yeah, I think, I mean, not always on the heater. I feel like some of these guys threw 100 guess. and they're throwing 70% yeah. sliders. So, you know, it's there's a time and a place, but I would say 80%, 85% of the time you're looking for a fastball. For bring, bring up the board of the outfield arms. Oh. Total base leader, first off. Dig yourself on that. And then outfield arm strength leaders. Were you a pitcher in high school? I was, yeah. Threw a bunch. Throw gas? You know, like 88, 90. <laughs> I didn't have any, you know. I didn't 93 have any from yet. the outfield. How many How many assists this year, Nays? 11. Tied for most in baseball. There we go. Don't run on me. I know, right? <laughs> Get into it. <laughs> Take you back to St. Louis days right here. What do you what what are you telling yourself? My son's 13 years old. He plays the outfield. What give 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 me a tip that Lane Thomas does in the outfield that that you feel like's helped you, a coach has given you, or a former player? I think you just gotta let it rip, man. Hitting and throwing. It's like you gotta practice the hard swing. You know, get used to like letting it rip and kind of control it in that in that way. I feel like you try to guide the ball. It's like nothing really good comes from that. So you're just ripping the lampshade. Yeah, until you you know until you start barreling or until you start you know making good throws at that velocity. I feel like you kind of train the big muscles and they get used to it. How's your drawing skills? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Okay. All right. Well, we pl <laughs> I plan on uh, on taking you down with Ron Darling and <laughs> Central <laughs> Scribbles. <laughs> I, I think it's remarkable, work. Lane, yet another <laughs> quality, good outfielder Robert. from St. Louis. <laughs> I mean, they, They're it giving is, them away, Robert. It is remarkable what they have produced.